What's up, Saltwater Fish University? Special video for you today. I got the man, the myth, the legend, Victor <laughs> Casales of Sportsman Boats with us today. We're at their factory. This is called the pad because there's a bunch of boats here, but we're gonna look at the particular one that has so many people interested. It's like the ultimate sandbar boat. And the name of this boat that we're looking at here is the Heritage. 261. We're going to talk about who it's for. We're going to talk about who it's not for. We're going to talk about pricing. We're going to give all of it to you in this video right now. Victor, before we give the specs, there's yep. a story behind this boat and everybody needs to hear this story. I actually saw, the, I believe I was at the dealer conference when this came out and I thought it was so cool. So talk about yep. it because this so, is interesting. Yeah, it's a story that's never really been told, which is, which is pretty cool, but. First time here, first time. breaking news here on Saltwater Fishing University. So as we're designing our boats and we have a product development plan that extends for years. Yeah. Uh, we wanted to do something special for our heritage line, right? Okay. We've got our open line. That's for our serious fishermen that have right. family. Yeah, angler first, family second. That's right. right. And then we've got our heritage line and our heritage line Family first, angler second, right? And it was lacking a little bit in that area. We felt like as we got into the bigger boats, what else can we do that would just absolutely change the game? Yeah, yeah. And so what we did is we went to a whiteboard, okay. physical whiteboard on an office, and we drew up what we would think would be the absolute ultimate family sandbar boat. The ultimate family that was the goal. sandbar boat. We okay. didn't care at the time if it was buildable, if it fit in the 26 foot range. It, it, there was no limits to yeah. what we were Just let your imagination run wild, okay? And Which is the way to do it. Up and we said, has to have do, two doors, dual entry, and the word water centric came up. We wanted this boat to be water centric. How do you bring the water centric views to the boat? Okay. And so we said, what we need to do is we need to open up the back. We need some way to get the back completely open. So if you're at the sandbar, you just have this beautiful open water. I'm where feeling the boat this, y'all. Is out of the way. Okay. And so water centric, new phrase. Yep. Water centric. Okay. This is what we've done. This and if you done. look at the layout of this boat, I kid you not, it is almost inch for inch what we drew up on that board that day. And that and that's what the vertical integration and design that we do here at Sportsman is really. It's second to none. Okay, cool. Know, we can do that. We're gonna show that. Let's start with some of the general specs, yep. right? So give us the general numbers that we should know if we're thinking yep. about this type of boat. It's a 26 foot boat, 9.3 beam. Okay. Um, and power wise. 26 long, yep. that's true length. True length. Okay, 9.6 yep. beam. 9.3. 9.3, beam. so it's not skinny, no. right? All right, so, but you can still trailer it safely. Okay. Twin engines and single engine configuration. So you nice. can get it in both packages. You okay. can get a single 425 or a pair of 150s or a pair of 200s. Okay, excellent. All available powers. I personally like the single on this particular model. Because the single 425? Yeah, because it gives you more room in the transom. You know, and if you're okay. not the, the, the offshore Good point. The offshore person, you don't really need the redundancy. Most of the time you'll be within cell phone. Yeah, range. right, if right, it's right. Not as big a concern. That's right. Less maintenance every year and just more room in the transom. Now, if you gotta have twin engines, we got that too. No, no problem. Right. It's just a preference. Of so it. if we had a 425 on it, in yep. terms of speed, what are we looking at? You're looking at a 52, 53 mile an hour boat. Yeah, it's getting up and yep. it's going just and fine. You're going looking at a 48 mile an hour boat with 150s and we expect somewhere in that 50 mile an hour on the 200s. Gotcha. So that's gotcha. plenty. I yeah. mean, you know, as far as being a 26 foot boat, it's a big 26 foot. Yeah. I mean, we're standing on it today and a lot of people look at this boat and now think it's a 26 foot boat. You see it right. coming at you on the water, it doesn't right. look like a 26 foot. Right. Tons of flair, tons of comfort inside and, and it's that deep boat that really feels like you're in the boat. Sweet, so. all right, cool. What do you say we jump on in? Give it a look, all right? All right, so let's start with the stern area, Victor. And as you're watching this video, just know it rained like five minutes ago, <laughs> so it's dirty. But we want you to see this because it's bad and it's different. So the stern area of the boat was obviously the big focus point for us. So right now this boat is more or less in what we call the sandbar mode. 
Sandbar mode. So sandbar mode. <laughs> you've got two stern anchors, right? So the, the reasoning behind both of this is if you're at the sandbar or maybe you're tied up to another boat, you may not have access to one side or the other. So we didn't want you to not have. So you got a ladder on both sides. A ladder on both sides. So we took it a step further. We said, well, what if you're on the water and you want to grab a drink? I don't want to hop on the boat. So we designed what you're standing on right there, which is a cooler. So that cooler is for the people that are outside the boat. You can Sweet. just reach in and grab a drink right from in there. Oh, wow. Okay, okay, I feel this. That's a cooler, y'all. Additionally to that, most sandbars requires two anchors, right? You're gonna have your bow anchor, you're gonna have your stern anchor for some, so we include a second stern anchor compartment on this side anchor rope and chain ships with the boat and it's got its own compartment here for a stern anchor smart so that way because that's a big deal yeah so that way you can do your you throw your stern anchor yeah you throw your bow anchor and typically you're, you're actually put the stern in um instead of beaching it that way you have the, the water centric view and like i said when when this boat is in sandbar mode like this side is right now there's to complete walkway right on this side you can do yes. the same thing to that side yes and then you turn your captain's chairs around you both can turn around and now you have what we call the water centric view where you're just looking out in the back of the boat okay now it makes forward. sense right now i got you now i got you it makes a lot of, of sense that, we've got dual side entry doors so you've got doors on both sides that open and then you're we're getting the picture at this point, right? It's the ultimate boat. Come in and out, yep. hang out, do everything you need to do. But we said, but there's more. There's more. But wait, there's more. Telescoping ski pole was the last thing. Wow, a here. telescopic ski pole. Yep. It simply pops up. Dude, that was great. So that way. You Did you catch that on camera, Vita? Woo! So that way you have access to the water sports as well. Yes. Not just the sandbar. So you I can show off my wakeboarding skills. <laughs> so we got that in. Smart. We couldn't forget access though. Yes. Total access. Hat. Because the total access is part of this sportsman whole like mindset of make it easy to get to the dang equipment. So there you go. So what you see here is you see our total access hatch here, all the rigging, all the components easily accessible right on there. Changing a bilge pump is a fairly straightforward process. And you see how so that simple. Skeeto bar ties into the stringer. So you've got all the strength of the stringer and all that weight going straight down. And that's how we get the strength out of that ski pole. That's really cool. And that's a ton of access. Like I can, pr I mean, I can almost stand up yep. getting in here. That's huge. I love it. Love this. All right, so let, let's keep let's keep it going because I, I'm just seeing things. And listen, y'all, you know, if you watch any of my reviews, we don't blow smoke. I, I live it like ideally, you're able to see this boat right now through my eyes. My passion is real. My questions are real. I have not like done a walkthrough really of this boat before. I've heard about it, but I haven't done it. And so some of these things are just completely fascinating and different. And that continues as we see the setup here in the stern area. Yeah, so just because it's our heritage line doesn't mean it doesn't have any fishing amenities. Yes. It was center console, it's still an offshore haul. So we brought in the aquarium live wells into this as well. Love that. And so even if you were offshore and you wanted to be fishing, you got a pair of 15 gallon live wells back here with the aquarium live wells. I mean, See right through them, bring that. check your bait. Absolutely. Love that. And it's just a stinking cool feature. It's a cool setup. Yeah. So like we talked about with these chairs swiveling, so we go ahead and we actually swivel this second one around and uh, put it into full sandbar mode at this point. It's great. So now let's say mom and dad, I could hypothetically like, <sighs> you know, have a drink, relax with my loved one, Absolutely. watching the kids Absolutely. play. We've got the shade right above us. Yep. 
big deal. Second seat can stay turned. You can flip back around if you've got a tuber or a skier behind the boat. That person can- I hadn't thought about that. Hat, can be looking- So the person that's driving- Right. And, and the, the spotter can truly be sitting and spotting, but you're right next to each other. That's great. Yeah. So that's you, great. You communicate even more so, say even if you're fishing. You flip the chairs around. You could have the, the aft view that we talked about. Yeah, so. catch that bite. Wham, wham. <laughs> mm. Yes, sir. So this leaning post here is just really, really versatile. You know, okay. we, and we find that including this in this boat really- Just sets it off. Took it to another level. The, utili the utility yep. of the design that's right. really is through the roof. Yep, and that's what we were after. Um, these are actually very, very comfortable chairs. So even yes. if you spend all day on Immediately them, I felt that. Yeah, even if you were spending all day sitting down at the sandbar or maybe even, you know, the grandparents, they might come to the sandbar, but they don't want to be as in the water as yes. the kids would be. If you're in the water, on the water, around the water, this is the boat that is absolutely hitting on all those points. Sweet. Let's talk about the helm. All right, helm area. So right here at the helm, you know, we've got everything you could possibly want. Of course, you know, we do have an upgraded sound system, which is uberly important in a boat like this. On the sandbar, y'all, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, we do offer the sort of the ultra premium upgrade from JL Audio, which is the M6 speakers with the DSP amps and the subwoofer and uh, the Fusion 750 head unit. It does come standard with one 12 inch Garmin. Optionally, you can get the second 12 inch Garmin. Yep. Um, and of course, you've got your tilt wheel, your trim tabs, your binnacle. You've got twin engines. You can get Helm Master on it. And actually, if you have a single engine, you could also get Helm Master on it. Oh, wow. There is single engine Helm Master available I didn't, as well. I didn't know that. That's so, cool. So another feature, again, for those that are entering into the boating yeah. world. And you don't want to embarrass yourself at the <laughs> dock and be on one of them YouTube videos where they're teasing you, you know, and it got a million views because you... That was the worst. That's the worst. Don't be there. Don't be that. <laughs> Don't be that boater. All right. Wrap around uh, tempered glass enclosure. Yeah. Yeah. Some storage up here, you know, for your phone and other things as well. All right. And then, you know, for for changing and things like that, right after a sa day at the sandbar, you know, you do have this area in here. Now, this boat is ready to ship, so we've got it full of all the cushions for it. Right. Uh, but, you know. But you can still stand up in there. You can change. You know, the kids can go in there, use the potty, and do everything they need to do at the sandbar. We do have fresh water and raw water washdowns on the boat, so they can take basically a shower, yes. turn around, go have dinner at a restaurant. Wow. After an entire day out at the sandbar. Yes. Um, and, you know, speaking of sandbar and all that, you know, one thing we haven't talked about is the, the type of upholstery that we use is called Silep. Okay. Um, and it's actually not vinyl like traditional boats would have. This is a silicone product. And so what it does, first of all, it gives you a soft touch, right? So yep. if you touch this, yep. Street, yep. nice and plush. But because it's a silicone product, it doesn't have any issues with sunscreen. It doesn't have any issues with staining. That's a major, for, for those that don't know about this, a lot of the upholstery in the industry has issues yep. with staining from either cleaners yep. or from lotions. Yep, from lotions. I mean, sunblock would turn it yellow and, yeah. and things like that. So if you get any stains, whether it's blood or, or it's anything, you know, on, on any of this uh, side leather, you can basically use soap and water and wash it off and it's like it never happened. And you all make your upholstery in-house, we correct? We're 100% Once again, which is a big deal because lots of times if your upholstery goes bad, you want to be able to order it and the manufacturer might say, oh, we don't use that supplier anymore. Right. And that just creates a, a huge headache. Absolutely. So wrapping around from there, um, we do have our, our bow area here. Um, and to be honest, for a 26 foot boat, this is pretty pretty nice size. Yes. So at the center, we have the same table that we use on our 350. Table. Actuated, Actuated, can come up, can act as a lounge. Exactly. Go all the way up, act as a table. Yep. Multiple uses again. Multiple uses again. What we wanted to do was give the bow as deep a seat as we can, right? Because it's more comfortable and safer for the kids. So if you look here, we've actually recessed the cushions under the glass to make the seating uh, smart. lower. So it it's robbed, flush yeah, with it. It robs a little bit of the storage in the box, but we felt like for a family boat, yes. deeper seating was smart. a compromise. I like it. So we have this entire wraparound seating. You can put the table up and fill this entire thing into a sun pad or use it as a table. Well, you know, it's point. interesting. It used to be in my mind that a dual console was the most comfortable family boat. And it's clear that 
like I look at it now, I, I feel like that's n not a thing of the past. In other words, there's no question that you can take a center console now and it can be in as comfortable, if not more, than the dual consoles yep. of the past were. Is that accurate, would you say? I would say that's accurate. And even from, a, say, a new boater coming to the market, yes. the dual console is a little bit more difficult to bring into docks and stuff like that because it's all wrapped around and you're like inside. Where a center right. console, you can jump off the console and push off a dock and, yes. and do things and have that walkability 360 degrees where the kids can basically run around. And it's, it's just a bigger cockpit space, just a way to strip it. It's the same size, but, yeah. but you're right. Ultimately, a center console equipped the right way can be have and, and be just as effective of a family boat yes. as a dual console can be. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and, that's, and that's really what we were after, just the ultimate sandbar family boat. The ultimate sandbar family can, boat. But you can still take fishing offshore. Yeah. Yeah. This hull is no different than our open 26 foot hull. So the hull for the open, which is the offshore focus yep. or fisherman focus first, same hull, yep. just we have different utility in the boat itself. Identical riding characteristics between yes. those two boats. All right, good so, to know. And, and you have an offshore boat version, and then we have our absolute 180 from that being our heritage line with all the amenities you see here. This is this is really, really cool. So let's wrap this up. Let's yep. talk about price, who it's yep. for, who it's not for. All right, one of the great things about sportsmen is they've been on the front end of transparency and pricing in the industry. Something that as a as a boat buyer, I know you've seen this before, call for quote, nothing sucks worse than that, because who's calling for quote? With that being said, they talk about it, and you can find a lot of the information on the website. You can even build and price out your boat, get an MSRP on the Sportsman website. With that being said, um, let's talk ranges. Yep. Bottom, top end, and yep. in between, what are we looking at? Yeah, about 140 to 160 is really? the that you're looking at on this boat. Wow. 140 to 160. Yes, sir. If somebody wanted to add a sea keeper, could they? They could not, not on this. So this is not a sea keeper. It's not. It's not really the purpose, but but that goes in line with what you've been talking about, which right. is, it's not meant to go offshore. Right. It's meant for the family. Right. It's not meant for the super rough days, and so you're probably like, you know, it's it's. There's a space constraint, and when we yes. talk about amenities for offshore, sea keeper comes to mind. When we talk about, about amenities for family, seating comes to mind. Yes. And if you have to give up seating to add the sea keeper, then that's where we draw the line between our open line and our- Because you system. could easily put, I'm just looking, comfortable seating here. One, two, three, four, yeah, five, six, to, seven, eight, nine. To yeah, to yeah I was gonna say, it's like- And it is yacht certified, so there's actually no limit on how many people you can bring on board. As long as like, you've got life jackets for them and they're safely in the boat, right? You don't want somebody hanging off the back or something, but- Great to know. So you said 140 to 160? Yep. Okay, all right. And let's finish with this. If if somebody says to you, who's this boat not a good fit for? Right. Right. I know we've addressed it somewhat, but let's right. bring it home still for, uh, even more so. Absolutely. What's the line in the sand where you'd say to somebody, not this Heritage 261 is not the right fit for you. Yep, inshore fishermen yep. will not find this boat to be a good fit. You know, one of our master lines would be better fitted for getting into really shallow water and red fishing and, yes. and different, putting the bow into the grass. This is not that So that's your big focus. This is not it for Not you. the way to go, nope. okay? If you are exclusive offshore fishing and you have a ton of people fishing on the boat, this is probably not the boat for you. You know, the live wheels are a little bit smaller than our open line. Right. Um, you know, the setup with the step there is not as comfortable, you know, as it would be if you had a close transom. And yes. it, it's just not designed for that. But for most people out there, are recreational fishermen, this boat fish is beautiful. Yes. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. Right. You've got plenty of rod holders, plenty of in four boxes for the fish. I mean, yes. you've got all the amenities you need. It's not saying you can't do it. It's but just not that top level We've that got you might see. something even better for those folks. So I, right. I would say at that point, just maybe look at the open 262 instead. Yes. Very similar haul, like I said, but a different layout on the top. That's right, that's right. Doesn't break the bank in terms of pricing. Amazing amount of features. Yep. This, Victor, has been a, just a tremendous walkthrough of the 261 Heritage from Sportsman. We love what you're doing. We love your transparency. I mean, I just, I just think this company just, it just, 
I just love that they've brought us the saltwater fishing university community here to the plant hopefully you enjoyed this video and helps you to get a sense for are you looking for that sandbar boat are you looking for that inshore fishing boat are you looking for that offshore fishing boat these are the questions that we need to consider that we need to think about when you think about what those priorities look like Absolutely. and not just this year but in three years and yep. five years and ten years yep. because our needs as families as individuals they evolve yep. over the course of time yeah yep. and a lot of times the center console word in a boat equates fishing yeah you talk about a center console that's not for us we're a family yeah and that's just not the case today yeah you, know, you, you broke the rules of this one brother yeah i mean the center console boat is just a well-balanced machine that can do many 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 different things depending on how you design it. amen to that and you can do many things as well so hopefully now you feel like you've got a sense for whether or not this is the ultimate family sandbar boat the heritage 261 from Sportsman. As always, my friends, make sure you like the video. It means so much to us, to the community. Keep us growing. Great things are happening. It's crazy how fast we're growing. We want you to be a part of it. Until the next time, my friends, stay salty. Thank you.